Welcome to VLearnX episode E004. I am Jim Cathode. This is my co-host, Tiffany Spectrum. Hello everyone. Tiffany, what shall we discuss today? Is it about music? Not today. We are taking a break from music. Today we are going to look at a problem called Knight's Tour and how to solve it using the depth first search algorithm. I did not understand any of that. Please explain more. Imagine a chessboard. Now imagine a knight placed on one square. The problem is to visit every square on the board on a single journey. Are multiple visits allowed? No. The knight should visit every square exactly once. It is an interesting problem. I probably could do it myself on the board. Not sure how to get a computer to do it. Worry not. We will use something called a depth first search to solve this problem. I have heard of it before. What is that? I have a visualization here to explain that algorithm. Have a look at this image. This is called a tree. Why do we need this? I thought we were talking about chess. It is easy to explain and understand the depth first search algorithm using a tree. But it is a very generic algorithm and we can use it to solve several problems. Understood. Those circles are called nodes. Each node has a unique number as its index. 0, 0 is the root node. Each node can have one or more child nodes. But a child can have only one parent node. Sorry for asking, what do these represent? It depends on the problem. For now, just think of it as an abstract data structure we use to understand an algorithm. I am not really good at that. But I will try. All the children nodes of a parent node are siblings. All the children, their children, and so on make up the descendants of that node. Do I have to learn all this family history to understand the algorithm? We only need these terms to explain the algorithm. Now, here is the problem. How to search for a given node, starting from the root node. For example, node index 11. Interesting. At every node, we only have the information about its immediate children. Not other descendants. Am I right? Yes, you are. How to walk along these edges until we meet the given node? Yes. That is the problem. Here is an idea. Pick a child and check for a match. Otherwise, get a list of all its descendants and check every one of them. If that fails, go to the next sibling and do the same. You are in the right direction. Could you improve on that? Is there a way to avoid creating a list of descendants? Instead of creating a list, we can just move to its children and perform the same operation. It reminds me of something. I can't remember the word for it. Recursion? Yes. We just have to search recursively all the descendants of a child before moving to its siblings. What you have explained is the depth first search algorithm. The core idea is to explore the descendants before the siblings. Do you have a visualization for that? Here you go. This is the search pattern produced by the depth first search. Just to remind you again, we are searching for 11. I understand the algorithm now. After 0 1, we considered all its descendants before considering its sibling 0 2. But how do we use it to solve the knight's journey? It's the same idea, but we don't use a tree. We have to think of various possibilities as children. Each of them can have its descendants. It's also a bit more complicated. There are multiple ways to reach the same square. We have to mark every square we visit so that we don't visit them again. I don't quite follow. Perhaps you could show me the code. Sure. Before we continue, let me ask, what all functions should we expect to see in the code? Let me think. We definitely need a function to do the search. And? 
and we need a function to make night movements. Correct. We will take a look at that function. This image shows all the eight possible movements of a knight from a given square. And here is the function that generates all such movements. Here you can see the output generated by that function. Why are there negative numbers? What exactly are these numbers? These are the two-dimensional movements based on the origin 0, 0. We just have to add these to the position of a given square to get all the possible moves. Tiffany, you could have just hard-coded that list in the code, instead of writing that complex function. True. But I like it this way. Now, let's look at the next function. This function produces all the valid movements for a given square. A few example outputs are shown on the right side. This is for a board of size 8 by 8. Okay. I understand now. These are like the children nodes of a tree for a given parent. In this case, all the nodes are mapped to positions. More or less. But it is more like a graph than a tree. There are multiple parents for a given square. Next, we need a way to keep track of the search environment. What is that? During the search, we need to keep track of the history of the squares visited. We also need a way to mark the visited squares. This is to avoid visiting the same square again. This is the function to check whether a square has been visited already. The variable vec stands for the position of the square. Where do you set all those marks? It is handled by the push function below it. This function is called whenever we visit a square. And this function is called whenever we leave a square. With this, we can now go to the search function. This is the function for search. I should expect to see a recursive function that goes into the descendants before exploring the siblings. Exactly. We will get to it. This function takes a position along with search environment as input. First step is to mark the current position and add it to the path history. This is done by the push function. Note that we have a matching pop function at the end. It is called only if the current path does not result in a search success. We need a way to check if the search has succeeded. This function named remaining returns the number of unseen squares. Next, we get all the possible night movements from the current position. They are like the children of the current position, right? Yes, you can think of it that way. After that, we rearrange all the possibilities according to a heuristic. Why do we need that? The number of search paths on this board is really huge. It is close to impossible to do a brute force search even with a fast computer. So, we use a heuristic to prioritize certain children during the search. This will massively speed up the search. I will go into the details of this function later. Next, we go through each possible movement from the current position. It's called a jump in this code. We break out of the loop in case of a search success. Also we have to avoid squares that are already marked. This is the recursive call to handle all the descendants of that child. Very interesting. It is the same function, doing the same thing. I have to admit that this is not easy to visualize. That is expected. It takes time to get used to recursive algorithms. Next we have the heuristics function. It is used to reorder possible jumps. The key idea is to consider first-order possibilities in the order of the number of second-order possibilities they produce. You mean the child that produces the lowest number of grandchildren should come first? Yes. Why is that? I would have assumed the exact opposite. I could not find a simple explanation. What I found goes something like this. Higher the number of possibilities, easier they are to traverse. So we should keep them for later use when the board gets cluttered. Interesting. Does this rule work in all cases? Not really. For example, it didn't work for a 7x7 board. 
it would seem that we have to handle the conflicts carefully to make it work. What is that on the right side? It is a short explanation I wrote about this function. A, B, C, and D are four possible outgoing jumps. The numbers are not real. I only added them to explain the idea. During the search, we consider them in the order D, B, A, C. Understood. Could you show me the final output? Here is the function to run the search from a starting position. On the right side, you can see the output from this function. The total number of jumps is shown in the green box. I see. Do they depend on the starting position? Yes. Also, it depends on the board size. As mentioned before, searches on 7x7 board did not finish for some starting positions. But for 8x8, the search completed quickly for all the starting positions. I can't make any sense out of these numbers. Do you have an animation to show this output path? I have. Here you go. Anything more for this session? No. This is all I have for today. Thank you Tiffany. We have used several external resources in this session. Here are the credits for that. The scripts we used are available publicly in GitHub. I will provide the link in the video description. See you again in the next episode. Thank you for your time.